Good afternoon. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking his glory to the ends of the world. This afternoon's message is connected to divinity. Connected to divinity. And our team scripture is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Please, I'm reading from the KJV. John says, Ye are of God, little children, and I have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Christian should always be conscious of the divine presence in him. We are talking about being conscious that God literally lives in you. Many times when Christians and Christians read the scripture that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. For some, they see it as a religious cliché. But this is not a religious statement, but a statement of fact, a literal fact that God really lives in you. And Christians ought to be conscious of this reality that every day, every second, wherever you are, God lives in you through his spirit. When taking into account all the resources in tackling issues and problems, don't forget this great treasure that you are constantly connected to divinity. It's important. The Bible says you have this treasure in earthly vessels. So it's a treasure. It's a treasure. So it's something to be joyous about. It's something to take advantage of. of. It's a treasure. Has it become a treasure to you? It's a treasure. It's a treasure. So in tackling issues and problems of life, we should be conscious that we are connected constantly to divinity. There is a divine connection. When a house is connected to electricity, they expect an inflow of electrical power. The same applies to the Christian. What ensures the flow is your mind renewed to this important truth. Though almost all Christians sing songs and quote scriptures of the indwelling of God, only a few walk in this knowledge. It has become a daily life reality to just a few, but a religious cliché to many. No, that shouldn't be. God wants us to face life with this awareness, the awareness that we are constantly connected to divinity, that we are constantly connected to divinity. God wants us to live with a daily awareness of this fact, this truth. Carnal Christians take into account only the natural physical resource when tackling issues or in problems. See, that's how carnal Christians are. Carnal Christians, for, they forget about what the faith of Christianity is about. So when they are in any issue, what they are conscious of are the solutions of this world, the sensual solutions, you see, the sensual appetites. So when they look around the natural they look they subject the natural right they subject it to interrogation and they find out that the natural solutions will not work then they give up they give up for instance a christian goes to the hospital and they detect something in his body and they say that oh probably a cancer or, or whatever and they say that oh this time you don't, you don't have any solution you don't have a solution, so you, you will die. The Christian just give up. Just give up. Why does he give up? He, he, most of them, they will give up and they now they start writing their will. They are preparing themselves to die. That's how many Christians are, are like. Why are they preparing themselves to die? Because it's only conscious of the natural physical resources. He forgets that there is a treasure in him. And that treasure... It's more powerful to uh, to do anything and solve any problem. Now, had that Christian been spiritual and been conscious of the spiritual reality, the spiritual verities, he would not give up. He doesn't give up because he knows that, no, there is something in me that can solve this issue, that can solve this problem. But because... He is not conscious of this divine connection and is only conscious of the natural connections. He gives up. That's the reason you see how many Christians die from sicknesses and are destroyed by also other problems. 
and and they don't overcome issues you see but the bible always we refer us to the greater one living in us when it comes to us overcoming circumstances it tells us that the reason why we overcome the world and its circumstances is because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world god never refers you to the, the natural connections the natural resources when it comes to you overcoming situations he always refers you to the divine connection to what is within you but when christians are in problem they go and, and, and they subject the natural resources, the natural solutions to interrogation, and then they find out that it will not work. Then they give up, and then they are blaming God. God, why, why is this happening? God, why? Some people will say, that, oh, maybe it's the will of God. No, it's not the will of God for you to suffer or be destroyed by the problems. It's not the will of God because you are not reading the word of God aright. You are not reading the word of God aright. He tells you that my son, my daughter, the joy, the reason, the, your hope in tackling issues of life and being a victor is because of the greater one in you. The greater one in you. The divine connection. You see. So we have to be on the same page with God. Many times, the reason many Christians are defeated is because they are not taught rightly and they are not on the same page with God. And if you are not on the same page with God, you may be Satan will take you right at his whims and then and and, 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 and and bring destruction to you and your family and then all what you end up saying is that is the sovereignty of God. And it wasn't so. It's because you didn't understand how these things works, how they operate. You see, so don't be like a carnal Christian. Now let's take Paul for an example, Paul the Apostle. When Paul went to the island of Melita. The Bible says, let us know in Acts chapter 27, going to the 28, that Paul was bitten by a viper, a venomous snake. And all the people were looking at Paul to fall down and die. Because God, this has been the cases of everyone who was bitten by such a poisonous snake. But when you're looking at Paul, Paul was not moved. The Bible says Paul just shoot the snake into the fire and was and went about. Uh, carrying out his daily activities as normal. Why will Paul act like that? So the Bible says that people look at him and say that this man is a God. But it's not because he was, was a God himself, but because God lives in him. Because Paul was conscious of his divine connection. Paul was conscious of Romans chapter 8 verse 11 because he made that statement in Romans chapter 8 verse 11 when he said that, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that indwells you, that dwells in you. So Paul was conscious of the fact that the spirit of God, God lives in him, the great one lives in him and by virtue of that, no poison from a viper could destroy him. And that is why it didn't move him. It didn't shake him. Now, there are many Christians who may be bitten by vipers or maybe given a, a deadly report or maybe suffering from you know, an infection. But how do they behave and respond this way? Faith is a response. You have to understand that faith is a response of the human spirit. It's a response. So you have to understand what faith is and respond the right way that is the difference that is the difference also many christians have not understood when the bible says renewing your mind god says that if you prove your world in in, in your life you see paul has to prove god's will when he came to what his health in this situation paul knew that he had to prove the will of god it was not god who was coming to what prove that world of the divine health Paul was the one to prove the role of God's divine immunity. Jesus said, "You shall drink poison and not die." So we see that it says, "This sign shall follow them; they shall drink poison and not die." So Paul didn't die, even though he was bitten by a poisonous snake. But what did Paul do to ensure that that world be proven? He had renewed his mind with that word of God that the greater one lives in him. And you have to understand what it means. When the Bible talks about renewal of mind, for many Christians, they think that their mind is renewed concerning something because they can quote scriptures, right? For instance, a Christian can quote scriptures, 
greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world so because he he knows romans chapter 8 verse 11 can quote that scripture to him it means that his mind has been renewed in that scripture no 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 that that is why many of them are not able to prove god's will in these areas of their life that's only mean of mind renewal you have to understand the definition of a renewed mind as it pertains to the word of god your your mind is renewed to anything in proportion to how to what to what degree that thing detects your response in life right for instance if you're a christian and you say that your mind has been renewed to the fact of if this of this scripture to this scripture that if the spirit if the holy spirit lives in you that same spirit that gives life to your mortal body then it means that like paul if you are bitten by a snake or you are an infection or any deadly thing comes into you your first response should give vibe your first response should substantiate this truth but there are many christians who quote their scriptures but when they get a deadly report then they their faith they become sorrowful you see they become sorrowful it just means that your mind was not renewed to this truth it means that you have not been fully persuaded by this truth you have not come to be fully persuaded this truth has not become the appetite of your response in life it means that it has not come home it has not come home but if like paul paul was fully persuaded that when god said that he lives in him it is true because god cannot lie so paul in his mind if god lives in me if this great god lives in me how can a poison overcome me so that's how his mind has been renewed so he, he in his mind he had this sense of divine immunity that's how he thought that he was immune to poison has have your where you have your mind been renewed to the truth when jesus said they shall drink poison and not die have your mind be, if your mind has been renewed to that scripture or has been renewed by that scripture it means that currently now as i'm talking to you you should see yourself that you are immune to poison so if i'm immune to poison if a viper beats me or an infection is found in me i don't uh give up neither do i become the stress or perplexed by such a situation because i know that i i am immune anyway why do some christians act desperately and hastily when a poison has been detected in their blood or an infection has been detected in them it's not because of the pain you say sometimes a christian may be told that oh there's an infection in you and even he has not started feeling any pains but yes he becomes very sad so what is the problem the person has not felt any pain he has not even he has not seen the signs and the symptoms of the disease but when he was told that he was suffering from a certain deadly disease then he becomes very sorrowful why is because in the mind of that christian he is not immune to deadly things please you see the difference but that christian whose mind has been renewed to the fact that he's immune to deadly things when that knowledge comes like the knowledge came to paul that had been bitten by a deadly snake it doesn't deter him because he knows that i'm immune anyway to this deadly thing so so what what is the deal so that's where god wants us to come to God wants his children to live in the word. Like James says that the word, the Christian should be doer of the word. And the one who does the word is the one, it's like the man who has seen his natural face in the mirror. You see, so when you become, you see yourself that you are the word and the word is you. And you live out the word that you see all these results. So the problem is that many Christians have not really been taught what faith is. What really the meaning of faith to understand what really faith is and how God expects us to pray to our faith. So faith changes your response and actions in life. Your daily response and actions in life is not really faith. It means that your mind has not really been renewed. You see? 
So, beloved, this is what makes the difference whether a Christian overcomes or is overcome. The difference between being overcome by COVID-19 or called the COVID-19 pandemic overcoming you. It's not just because you're a Christian. No, it is a Christian whose mind has been renewed. John gives us the reason for our overcoming. He says, what causes you to overcome the world and its problems is the consciousness of your divine connection, the awareness of the literal indwelling of God. God bless you.